Okay, so this is the uh, Teton Crest route. The Teton Crest Trail takes you through some of the best scenery of the Tetons, but it doesn't cover the entire range. This version of the Teton Crest route includes the Teton Crest Trail, plus an extension that will take you across the majority of the entire range. This is a true Teton Mountains Traverse hike. So starting off at the northern end, going southbound, you'll be starting at Hominy Peak Trailhead. It's a pretty gradual climb all the way up to Hominy Peak. And you'll be starting off in the Jedediah Smith Wilderness. The trail goes in and out of the Grand Teton National Park and the Jedediah Smith Wilderness area a whole bunch of times. And you'll actually be able to camp outside of the National Park every night, so you don't need permits if you don't want to get them. Hominy Peak itself isn't really much of a peak. That's right here. There's a little bit of a side trail that you can go up there if you want. Um, but it gives you a good view of what's coming up. Some massive mountains down to the south. After Hominy Peak, it's relatively level, going all the way to Jackass Pass, which is around here. And then this green line here is the border of the Grand Teton National Park. So the trail is going to have you going in and out of the park for a couple miles. And then up here there is a few small little ponds, and these are kind of the only water source in the area. So that would make this a good place to camp. And it's real easy to get some water and then camp outside of the national park border. So you're camping in the wilderness area, and then that way you don't need a permit. Day one was a short day of only about six miles. Uh, the next day would be much bigger, about 18 miles and a ton of elevation change. Just after those ponds, you'll reach Conant Pass, which is right here. It's not much of a pass, but uh, it's nice and open, and you'll get some views of the mountains that are coming up. In this area, the trail kind of disappears. It's very overgrown and brushy, and it's pretty clear that uh, this trail isn't used very often. So keep an eye out for rock cairns that are poking up out of the brush. Um, definitely helps to have a GPS in here, so you kind of know which way to go. After Conan Pass, you'll follow the trail downhill towards Grizzly Creek. Once you start going downhill, the trail is easier to follow. But at a certain point, the Teton Crest Trail is going to cut in a southeast direction. And you probably won't see any signs, and you won't see a trail leading off in that direction. So it's very easy to miss this junction. What happened to us was we just kept going, and we reached the junction with Conant Basin Trail and the Conant Pass Wilderness Trail, which is over here. Um, and then we realized we had to go back, so we backtracked about 0.3 miles, and there is no sign of a trail junction here, but <laughs> um, just by looking at my GPS, we figured out that we had to go this way. And when you do leave the trail and head in this direction, if you're in the right area, eventually you'll pick up some faint traces of a trail, but it's very hard to follow. And for the next few miles, it's going to be that way, through these trees and then through these kind of sparse meadow areas um, there isn't much of a trail at all so you'll be doing some bushwhacking when you get to here this is the junction with the red mountain trail uh, there will be a little bit of a sign but it's pretty short and the brush gets pretty tall in here so you might not find it um, but after this the trail starts to get a little bit better so you'll follow the trail all the way to Nord Pass which is right here this is the first pass that actually feels like a pass. There's a bit of a climb up to it and up on top of the pass you'll start to get some views of some more dramatic mountain landscapes. And then the trail goes back downhill and heads towards Camp Lake which is a good place to camp believe it or not. And then it's a long downhill all the way down to Bitch Creek. This is a pretty cool river valley. Seems like it would be a good place to see some wildlife, some moose and you'll follow this valley all the way up. Eventually the trail will cross Bitch Creek and then you have a pretty big climb up to Dead Horse Pass. Depending on the time of year that you do this hike you will probably encounter some snow. We hiked it in mid-July and there were some snow patches, but nothing was too bad. I never felt like I needed an ice axe or crampons or anything like that. If you hike much earlier in the year, um, it might be a good idea to have those things. Once you get up Dead Horse Pass, and you go right back down. 
and this is Badger Creek down here. There's another good campsite right by the creek. And as soon as you get down to that Badger Creek, then you go right back up to basically the same elevation that you were at at the Dead Horse Pass. Then you'll be on this kind of shelf below the Green Lakes Mountain. Um, this is a pretty good place to camp to. And you'll follow that all the way to the Granite Basin. This is a really nice meadow walk and a whole bunch of little alpine lakes. Day two was probably the hardest because there was so much elevation change and the trail disappeared for a little bit. Uh, coming up for day three, that's definitely the highlight of the whole trip. When you reach the junction here with the Green Mountain Trail, uh, continue on the Teton Crest North Trail just for a little bit, about a mile or so. And then somewhere in this area you're going to leave the trail and head cross country. Basically once you get a clear view of Little's Peak, which is this kind of rounded rocky hill right here, once you can see a, a clear path to that peak just take it and you'll be hiking cross country. Uh, when you get to the base of the mountain here, this is all scree and you'll have about a 500 foot climb up the loose rock and then up to the peak of Little's Mountain up here. And then once you're up on this peak, this is going to be the highest point of the entire hike. You're going to have incredible views up here and a perfect view of the Grand Tetons. Just hope that the weather is good because you're going to be very exposed as well. Um, so probably don't do this climb if it looks like some weather is moving in. This also marks about the halfway point of the hike. So from up on top of Little's Peak you're going to descend down the southeastern ridge and kind of follow this ridge line straight east until you see Lake Solitude down on your right which is to the south. And from here, um, just follow the ridge basically until you see some sort of route down to the lake. Uh, you can take the ridge all the way to the trail. This is the North Fork Cascade Canyon Trail. It'll wind all the way down to Lake Solitude. Um, but we actually chose to take a shortcut and once we found a good route down from the ridge, we just went straight down to the lake. Um, I think that's a lot faster, it'll cut off a couple miles, and it might actually be a little bit safer because this ridge line down here gets pretty sharp, and it turns into a knife edge, and it looks like it might be kind of tricky to stay on this ridge. There might be some snow left over here too. You can glissade down that, so that's kind of fun. Once you're down at Lake Solitude, that's when the crowds are going to increase. <laughs> the trail up until now has been pretty quiet. I think this whole side of the park and the Jedediah Smith wilderness is pretty remote and people don't go there very much, but once you're down at Lake Solitude, you're inside the National Park and this is a very popular day hiking spot. And for good reason too, because the views here are just unbelievable. If you can time this to be around here during sunset, you'll get some incredible views of the Grand Tetons glowing in the golden hour. So from here, take the Lake Solitude Trail all the way down. Um, there are some campsites along this trail. The lake itself is a day use area only, but going down here there are some campsites and they look like pretty cool places to camp if you do want to get a permit for camping inside the National Park. Down here you'll reach the junction with the South Fork Cascade Canyon Trail. Um, you'll be hiking in trees for a while, but it's a pretty nice hike. And you'll have a long climb up this canyon all the way up to Hurricane Pass right here. And from up on this pass, this is another place that you might want to time for the sunset. Because you're going to have incredible views of all three of the Grand Tetons. I ended up watching the sunset from here and then night hiked for a couple miles back to camp. And it was definitely worth it. Just hope that you have some good weather here because it can get pretty windy. I'm assuming that's why they call it Hurricane Pass. So after Hurricane Pass, you'll be leaving the National Park again. You're back in the Jedediah Smith Wilderness. And pretty much anywhere between Sunset Lake and the Alaska Basin right here is a really good place to camp. For the last day, the terrain kind of mellows out. 
the elevation change isn't as extreme and you leave the most dramatic mountain scenes behind you. But the trails are super nice and the hiking is pleasant as you walk through high meadows on the way back to the trailhead. Then you'll climb the sheep steps right here. Not that bad of a climb, not as bad as it sounds. And Mount Meek Pass, again, one of those passes that's not really much of a pass. Um, but from there you'll be looking down the Death Canyon shelf and the Death Canyon right here. It's kind of a scary name for a really pleasant walk actually. Uh, you're back in the National Park after you cross the Mount Meek Pass. And anywhere along the Death Canyon shelf would be a really cool place to camp, but again you'll need a permit since you're back in the park. Once you reach the Fox Creek Pass, you're back out of the park and back into the wilderness. So anywhere from this pass to a couple miles after Marion Lake, anywhere in here is a really good place to camp too. As you keep going south, you're kind of leaving the most dramatic mountain views behind you and you're heading into a nice meadow walking and eventually you're going to go into some forests too and eventually you're going to climb up to Phillips Pass which is right about here. You'll have a real steep climb to get up there. It's relatively short but it's really steep. <laughs> Not the most fun thing to do at the end of a longer backpacking trip. But once you get up to the pass then it's very easy and straightforward all the way downhill going through meadows and forest all the way down to the trailhead and hopefully you parked your car in the right spot. This is a good place to park. Um, it's a pretty big parking area and it's right along the Teton Pass Highway. So there you go, full traverse of the Teton Mountain Range.